everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be bringing you another episode of Back Focus 101. Now today we're going to be focusing on the Petsfall lens, specifically the William Optics Red Cap 51, which is a quadruplet Petsfall. Now that being said, this will probably be the easiest episode of Back Focus 101 I make, so I should have some extra time to show you all the different configurations I use on the Red Cap. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Now the proper back focus for the William Optics Red Cap 51 is 59.7 millimeters from the front end of the M48 adapter to your imaging sensor. Now, why is it so easy then to get to the proper back focus on this telescope? Because that's kind of a weird number, right? Usually the industry standard is 55 millimeters, or they provide you a way to get to 55 and then to the rest. Well, that's kind of the same case with this. You'll actually see that the back focus is not really dependent so much on your spacers as it is on your focuser. And that's what makes the Petsfall such an easy design to work with when it comes to back focus. As I change the focus position, all of the elements move. And that is not normal for a telescope. If you recall previous episodes of Back Focus 101, anytime I put on like a field flattener or a focal reducer flattener combo or something like that, that, that optical piece sets the back focus and you have to have a certain amount of spacers and get to that exact point, right? Well, that is not the case in the Red Cap 51 because all the glass moves. There's no set glass piece, all of that moves, and so getting to back focus is actually pretty easy. Now, just to demonstrate this for you, you'll see that as I move the focuser, the lens in the rear moves. And the same is true of the lenses that are on the objective end of the telescope and the lens that is in the center. So basically, this is all the same cell. So as you move the focuser, all the lenses move as well. The Red Cap 51 is capable of illuminating a full frame sensor. So because of that, William Optics chose to go with an M48 thread instead of an M42 thread to avoid vignetting. So just be aware of that. The other neat thing is this adapter is also a two inch filter vault. So if you take it off, the other side is threaded for two inch filters, which is really handy, especially for DSLRs where the body eats up most of your, uh, your back focus. Um, you can still incorporate a filter right in here and not have to worry about it. So that's where we're gonna start is with DSLRs. I'll show you how to integrate a filter and, and get to that proper back focus. Um, and then we'll move over to the CCD slash CMO style of deep sky imaging cameras. All right, so the first thing you're gonna want to do if you wanna use a two inch filter is just remove your 48 millimeter adapter. And again, on the bottom here, that's going to reveal uh, threads for a two inch filter. So now I'll take my Optolong L Pro and I'll just thread it on here. The L Pro is a broadband light pollution filter, it really helps for cutting out street lights and other sources of, of light pollution, sodium lamps, mercury lamps, that sort of thing. So now that that's on there, I'm just going to put that back in and thread the M48 adapter back on. Now on a standard DSLR like this one, the sensor is usually 44 millimeters from the flange here. So it sits really deep in the body. If I move the mirror, you can see it hiding back there. And so this is gonna eat up a majority of the back focus as we've discussed many times on previous episodes of Back Focus 101. So really all I need to do now is add an appropriate T-ring, get it connected to the telescope and I'm good to go. The T-ring I use to connect my DSLR to the Red Cap 51 is the William Optics 48 millimeter T-ring. Now I will say this, it is the best T-ring I have ever bought. When I connect it to my DSLR, it sits flush against the flange and it does not move. So this is a super quality product here from William Optics. So I'll just slip this on here. You can see just how tight that is. I'm trying to move it, it does not move at all. Super, super solid. All right, so my DSLR and T-ring take up 55 millimeters of back focus here. So what do I need to do to get to the rest? Well, as I mentioned, all I need to do is focus. And when my image is focused, I'm at the proper back focus. It's that simple. You don't have to worry about filters. You don't have to worry about a million spacers or anything. As long as your telescope is able to focus, you have the right back focus. It's as simple as that. 
All right, so now I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to attach a uh, CCD or CMOS style deep sky camera to the Red Cat 51 and obtain that proper back focus. This is my ZWO-183MC Pro. It's a great little color camera with a small sensor, but it provides an excellent resolution when used with the Red Cat 51. So again, if you want to integrate a two inch filter using this setup, you can use the, the two inch filter vault. Um, but this is probably the easiest setup you can possibly imagine. So this is a 16 and a half millimeter M48 to M42 spacer that comes with the, uh, the ZWO camera. So I'm just going to thread this on first. So that's going to give me 16 and a half. And that changes the threads to, to M42, which is what this next spacer is. So this is a, uh, a 21 millimeter spacer. So putting this on here is going to give me 37 and a half millimeters. And then my sensor to flange distance is six and a half millimeters. And then this ring on top gives me an additional 11. So this is 17 and a half millimeters. Add that to the 37 and a half millimeters and you get 55. So besides the DSLR, that right there is probably the easiest way of, of getting 55 millimeters. And then again, to, to finish it off, you just get focus. Okay, so what if you didn't want to use a threaded filter vault though? Like you wanted to quickly change out filters and you're sick of unthreading it. Well, that's where a filter drawer comes into place. Now, the nice thing about this ZWO filter drawer is it is 21 millimeters thick. It's the exact same thickness as the 21 millimeter spacer. So if you flip flop them out, you don't really change anything about your imaging train, but you do give yourself the ability to quickly change filters. So we'll go ahead and throw that together next. All right, so you'll notice that the filter drawer is actually M48 threaded on the bottom, so it actually won't thread on. So what I need to do is use this converter ring that came with my camera. This is gonna convert the threads from M42 to M48. Now you wanna be careful when you tighten this. You'll notice that there's two little grooves on this ring. You wanna make sure that you can see those when you tighten it. That way, if you ever get thread locked, you can still get it off by using a spanner wrench or you can use a hack and go with calipers. But either way, you just wanna make sure you see these grooves so in that event that they do get locked up, you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this on here. There we go. And that's gonna convert those threads to M48, so now my filter drawer can go on. And then last but not least, my camera with the 11 millimeter ring. And again, we're at 55 millimeters and you can see just how easy that was. In fact, I'm gonna rotate this and tighten everything back down. That way I have access to my filter drawer right out the top. So if I wanna use my L Enhance and shoot narrow band or go to the L Pro, it's really easy to swap things out and you don't have to undo your whole train to get to that, that uh, filter vault. Now what if you wanna shoot monochrome with a filter wheel and get a really nice, rich, detailed image? Well, this is the ZWO-183MM Pro. It has the same sensor as the 183MC Pro that I just showed you, it's just monochrome. So let's go ahead and throw this together real quick. Okay, so just like in the previous configurations, the 16 and a half millimeter spacer goes first. And that is followed by the filter wheel, which is too big for my table, so I'm actually gonna have to lift this and put it on. That 360 degree rotator really comes in handy. All right, so with the filter wheel now on, I just need to install this two millimeter male to male adapter that comes with the filter wheel. Now this side has holes, that side has holes, so it doesn't matter how you put this one on. If you get it thread locked, uh, you can use a spanner wrench either way. So you don't have to worry about this one so much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread this on now. There we go. And then just thread on the camera. And there we go. Now in this case, I'm at 56 millimeters of back focus in my imaging train. But remember, that doesn't matter because we're just trying to get in the ballpark range of the focus. As long as I can get in focus, I'm good to go. Now my final point is just to summarize the Petzval back focus. 
It does not matter if you have 31 millimeters of spacers, or 42 millimeters, or 50 millimeters. As long as you can obtain focus and get a nice crisp image, you are at the proper back focus. It's as simple as that. And that's really why these systems are so great for beginners and experts alike. Because you don't have to worry about that optical train so much, you can get going right away, and it's a very simple system to use. The other added benefit is, well, for nature photography, if you're swapping out cameras, you don't have to worry about the spacing requirements, so it behaves just like a normal camera lens would as well. Essentially, you can obtain focus on this pet's fall, you are at the proper back focus. I want to wrap up this episode of Back Focus 101 by talking a little bit more about the Red Cat 51. Now, I know this isn't a review, but I wanted to leave you with my thoughts on this telescope. And that is, this is a tremendous astrograph as well as terrestrial scope. I use mine for imaging the night sky as well as birding. And with that FPL 53 and FPL 51 glass, the images are just so sharp. They just really pop out of the screen. I totally believe the claims that this is the world's sharpest 250 millimeter lens. I mean, every time I image this, I'm just, so surprised at how beautiful and how popping the, the images are. So with all that being said, I just want to thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoy these episodes of Back Focus 101, and that if you have any questions coming into it, that I was able to address those. So anyway, that is the William Optics Red Cat 51, as well as Petsval Back Focus. So have a great day. Again, thanks for watching, and clear skies.